Terminator is going to be, of course, George Benton, uh, along with the uh, legendary Lou Duba. So Duba with his back to you, George Benton just outside the rope. So you talk about if experience in your corner is worth anything. He's got a ton of it over there right now. This is a look at the man that will fight him, Bill Corrigan, out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. 7-4-1, 245 pounds. Interesting enough, out of all the heavyweights we've had, this was the heaviest we had. All the rest were right below 225 and very well prepared for this fight. Corrigan comes in. Matter of fact, I saw him slumped in a chair and sound asleep out uh, uh, just before playing a little of the, uh, the the cards on the outside, but he was sound asleep in the lobby here at the hotel. So he's well rested, to say the well, least. I hope he wasn't preparing for the <laughs> fight. Or... So both fighters are up. Let's go with the introduction of our fighters here as we get ready for heavyweights. Fighting six rounds here once again is our ring announcer, Jimmy Payton. Ladies and gentlemen, the next stop of the afternoon, six rounds in the heavyweight division. Introducing first, in the blue corner, he weighed in at 245 pounds. He has a professional record to his credit of seven wins, four defeats, one draw, and five by KO. From Minneapolis, Minnesota, welcome Bill Corrigan. And introducing. In the red corner, he weighed in at 220 pounds. He has a professional record to his credit of 11 wins, no defeats, and 10 by KO. Fighting out of Samoa, let's welcome David Tua. Six rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. Again, goes one way, David Tua the other way. Tua will be in the blue trunks while the green of Bill Corrigan here in our ring, Corona Extra. Bringing you our heavyweight explosion today from the new Aladdin Hotel Casino. As you see, uh, Jay Natty is our referee for this fight, and they're ready to go. They're set for six. And let's see how the Terminator comes out in a big hurry here. Terminator, a 1992 Olympic bronze medal winner for New Zealand is Tua. And he comes out promptly here as Corrigan tries to backpedal away. Good arsenal of punches by Tua, the two times we've seen him fight here so far, Bob. Oh, geez, you know, he's been down training in Houston, and I've seen him in the gym, and, you know, the biggest problem that Lou's having is keeping some sparring partners. This guy, I mean, he puts them to sleep. Tua with an amateur record of 84 and 5, 72 of those wins by knockout. And that's in three-round amateur boxing, where, you know, safety is very important. I mean, this, this kid is just naturally heavy-handed, Lou. Duva saw him over there in Barcelona and fell in love with him. Tua, interesting enough, has a dream. And, of course, when you're looking at him 5'11", and the way he's built the 220, it would be the elusive dream, to say the least, and that is to be the first NBA basketball player from Samoa. I don't think that is going to be a dream he will obtain. Heavyweight uh, championship of the world? Maybe that's in his arsenal somewhere. It's a lot closer. <laughs> But he is, he, he's, you know, he's taking his time here, David, too, a little bit. And he, he's landed a good right hand at Bill Corrigan's body, which I don't think uh, Lou and Georgie Benton, when they were sizing up Bill, they could miss that. He's carrying a few extra pounds around his midriff. By the way, I wanted to tell a story, but I wanted to make sure that David, too, was way across the ring. By the way, they used to call him a sissy when he was growing up. As a matter of fact, his sister bloodied his nose and even would hide from his dad when he suggested doing a little sparring. Well, that seems like 100 years ago for this 21-year-old. He's come a long way. He's a tough customer in the ring now. Junior Jones has got a similar story. You know, the, the great bantamweight out of New York, his, his sister used to force him to fight. So again, has been somewhat toying here. Corrigan trying to back him up with a lead right hand. Hasn't thrown much of the left jab. So again, hooking with the left and right hand. George Benton, by the way, leaned into his ear just before the uh, first round started. He almost had a feeling he told him, just go out, let's work a little here in the first round and see what we can get away with in round two. And unless something happens in the first round, don't worry about it. Just go out and test him out here. Well, that's just what he's doing. He's relaxed in there, but this is good because he, he was such a, a bundle of energy when he first got started. Uh, you know, he came in with reckless abandon. You can see what a a year and a half in the gym with George Benton and Lou Duva have done to, for this kid. By the way, out of those 10 knockouts, six of them have come in the first round, so he is very capable of putting somebody away. A couple in the second, a couple in the third, so all 10 of his knockouts and his 11 fights have come inside the first three rounds. He does not work long. 
Corrigan will apparently survive the first round for Tua to regroup. Corrigan to try to play some defense, and we'll find out what happens in round two in a moment. Second round of a scheduled six-rounder here. Once again, as the two fighters step into the center of the ring, and Tua, let's see if he has made any adjustments here, Bob, and tries to get anything going. Again, young man who is uh, fighting for New Zealand as an Olympian, training in the United States, and hails from Samoa. Yeah, I had a chance to visit with Lou Duva yesterday, and they took him, David, home. Had a nice big crowd for him, big homecoming for him, and uh, they look forward to going back there again. It, I, I like his defense. You know, he's picked off everything that Corrigan has. Uh, he's definitely working with Corrigan here a little bit, but, uh, you know, he, that doesn't stop Bill from trying to hit him. He's parrying his shots. He's working good and coming in there looking, looking for a clean shot to put Bill Kerrigan back to where you saw him yesterday, Sam. Yep, found asleep in a chair out in the lobby here at the, uh, the Aladdin Hotel. <laughs> you see how good Tua goes to the body. I mean, he hooks that body as well as anybody. You can already see some redness, and now he comes upstairs with a headshot. He's another example of a, of a short fighter that, you know, uses that his height to his advantage. Ooh. Oh, big punch, and Corrigan staring at the ceiling. He will not make it up for this one. Corrigan's going to be out, and he's going to be stopped here. As the referee, Mr. Natty, says, no, it is over in round number two. Rightfully so. Well, Corrigan, when he fell almost straight backwards, was looking straight at the ceiling, and he really took a shot from David Tua. And now there's concern as the doctors are in the ring and looking at Corrigan as Tua has picked up. Now here's the 11th knockout in his 12th victory, and there is Corrigan after he's been turned over. That's did it. You can see the body, one going a little bit low. In those body shots that started to take and it was a left hook so the left hook is what finally put him down and it was a wide sweeping left hook and down goes Kerrigan this is a better angle of it there it is boom got him right by the, the ear one minute 17 seconds of the second round winner by knockout David Tua so David Tua still, still, still undefeated now 12 and 0 with his 11th knockout and this young Olympian starting to really make some noise under the tutelship of uh, George Benson along with uh, Lou Duba. And Ladies Bob Spagnola is up in the ring. We'll be getting some conversation from Tua. Hey, David Tua, how do you feel after that? Nice sweeping left hook. Yeah, well, uh, first of all, you know, uh, thank the good Lord you know, for watching over me. You know, uh, I, mentally it was meant to be a hard fight, but uh, thank God for, for looking over me. Yeah, you know, uh, I stick to the game plan that George and Lou Duba got me doing. What I got to do is just take my time, pick my punches, and just be sharp and just be alert. And um, I'm very happy the way things are working out. Yeah, you've seen, I've watched you in the gym in Houston and everything. You seem like you're calming down and, uh, you know, you worked this guy, walked him around a little bit before you uh, really landed your power shots on him. Well, you know, uh, if you go out there trying to look for the big shots, you know, you're leaving yourself open for the other guy to hit you. All you got to do is just be sharp, stay alert, you know, counter punch and just listen to the corner. That's the most important thing. Excellent work. How do you feel, Lou? Oh, he's coming along real well. You know, we've been trying to give him defense. Uh, we're just getting them bobbing weed. We're giving him a little Rocky Marciano style, you know, and uh, press the guy and go. I want to turn him into a good body puncher. Uh, he's starting to learn. He's a good pupil. He's learning real well, and uh, this kid's going to be camp someday. What do you think you'll do with him next? Do you have anything on schedule? Yeah, well, we want to come back and fight over here. You know, we wanted to beam over to uh, New Zealand especially, and uh, I'm, move I'm looking to move the guy as quick as we could, move him up into contention, and uh, I think sooner or later he's going he's to be recognized. He's got another year ahead of him. Sure, sure. Take your time. All right. Well, congratulations, fellas. Good job. Thank Back you. to you, Sam. Thank you very much, Bob Spagnola, and another short day's work again by David Tua. And here was the end again.